Hi YouTube! I want to make a quick and hopefully helpful video about how and why I use Google Chrome on my Arch Linux distribution. First is why. Um, I know that there are a lot of um, good alternatives that are open source that you can build from scratch, like Firefox in particular, which uses less memory. Also, uh, lighter weight distributions like Midori and uh, highly customizable distributions like uh, Jumanji. But the reason that I like Google in particular is because I am an avid Netflix watcher. And uh, for a long time, Netflix wasn't viewable on Linux, not natively anyway. Um, the Netflix DRM, or Digital Rights Management, was provided by Microsoft Silverlight, and Microsoft was unwilling to port that to the Linux kernel. So for a long time, we had to come up with our own hacks and workarounds to get Netflix to work, and a lot of times it just wasn't super great. But uh, somewhat recently, Google came out with its own alternative to Silverlight, which is Widevine decryption. Netflix accepted it, and so now, as long as you have a Google Chrome browser, you can watch Netflix natively um, on just about any platform. So that's why I use it. But uh, when it comes to my browsing habits, there's a couple things I like. One is that it's a very responsive browser. And two is just uh, securing my data so that you know my uh, browser history isn't open to anybody who happens to be walking by. So uh, I thought I'd just go over how I accomplish that. And if it's helpful to you, awesome. So first, I edit my file system table. That file is available in your Etsy directory. Um, also, I should. Uh, mentioned that um, I'm using Arch Linux. I don't know if that will change anything for you. It shouldn't, but just thought I'd uh, disclaim that. So your FSTAB file is going to have a number of different columns. The first one is going to be the file system identifier, um, whether that be a device or a partition or what have you. Uh, second one is going to be the directory that is being mounted. Third is going to be the file system type, the format. Fourth are going to be mount options for that file system. And last is going to be pass and dump, respectively. Uh, we don't need either of those things in this case, so both can be zero. So uh, first will be tempfs, and that will make sure that this profile that you're selecting is going to be mounted in RAM as opposed to on your hard drive. Now, a potential downside of this for you is that it means that upon reboot, all of your browsing history and everything else um, will be gone permanently. What I recommend is that you just use your Google account to log into the browser and then synchronize all of your uh, history and everything else. Do that first so that whenever you do browse, your uh, history and settings gets preserved on the cloud, which can then just be resynchronized next time you log in. So. Um, you can put the entire Google Chrome folder in there instead of the default subfolder. But if you do that, then it's going to prompt you every time you open it. Uh, do you want this to be your default browser? Do you want us to uh, collect and send statistics, etc.? So by going one level deeper, you get to avoid that. Uh, system or the um, file system format is going to be temporary file system again. And then mode is 0777, no reason not to leave it wide open. That's uh, the permission. So full read, write, and execute permissions. And then I also add no A time just to minimize writes. So I do that both for the configuration part of Google Chrome and then also for the cache. So again, this just allows it to load lightning quickly. There it is. And uh, also means that you know if I die, I don't need to ask in my will that somebody delete my internet history for me. Uh, part two, I use i3 as my window manager. I've gotten away from conventional desktops. And if you're willing to take the plunge, I recommend that you investigate the virtues of it too. Uh, it's, heavily, um, it's heavily configurable. And also, it relies pretty heavily on key bindings. So not much of a point click and uh, no desktop to speak of. But I love it. So the two that I'm going to go over here are these two lines. This is how I launch it. I just use my mod key plus G, and that executes Google Chrome for me from this directory. That's where the binary is located. I also pass it the flags of password store equal basic. Now, that would be um, unsettling if you were storing your profile to your hard drive. But since it's going to be in volatile storage anyway, it's better to do it this way. That way you're not prompted a second time for your authorization. Now, another thing that you can add here are flag switches begin and flag switches end. So I'm going to open up Chrome really quickly just to show you what that is. If you go to uh, Chrome colon slash slash and then um, flags, these are all the experimental modules that is that are provided.
this particular one that I've added, Enable Tab Audio Muting, means that you can individually mute a tab. So if you have, you know, one page open that you're reading and another one that you're watching, you know, you can individually mute those. Or if an annoying uh, flash-based advertisement is playing on one, you can just click that off and you won't be hearing it anymore. And then uh, the second key binding I have, my Mod Plus I, will do the same thing except open it in incognito mode, as you can see here. Now, um, if you're using a computer and somebody wants to borrow it and you don't want them you know, looking through everything that you've been doing on the internet. I also have a short script that I have bound to one of my keys in my i3 config file. And what it does is it looks for any um, PID with the name of Chrome in it. I recommend that when you do pkill, you do use the minus U flag to specify yourself. That way if anybody else is logged into the machine, then it doesn't automatically and accidentally boot them out as well. But anyways, uh, then you can issue the remove uh, minus R for recursive and F for force. Everything in those two um, profiles that we have mounted in FSTAB back here. Um, one thing I've noticed is that if you have multiple instances of Chrome open, it doesn't always get all of it in the first pass. It'll kill a couple windows and then just leave them there and some things will be left over. So with my scripts, I issue it to sleep another second and then make another pass and do it again. And that clears it out pretty quickly so that when I open it again, you know, if I've gone to Wikipedia or something like that, if I hit my key and then reopen it, then it's no longer in my history. So anyways, that is how and why I use Chrome. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section and I will answer them just as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching.